Hello again. So it's time now to bring the work into the boat. It's now early May and uh, I think the summer is about to come. It's quite warm day today and uh, I brought all the stuff to the boat. The first thing I'm going to do now here is to clean up all this mess so we can start to take a look at the places of all this electrical stuff. I mentioned earlier that I took all the electrics away and uh, so I'm going to build all this on the ground up. There is just a little bit more work to do, sanding or painting, but after that everything should be ready to install all this stuff. But let's take a look at the motor first and uh, talk about that a little. So the motor lives down here. I have now sanded and painted all the engine compartment. It feels like new and clean and nice. So the motor mount is here. It's the original Volvo Penta motor mount where we built this mount for the electric motor. I just finished painting it a few days ago, so I'm not going to install it permanently yet. I let it dry at least a few days before we put the sealant ring between there. The paint is still a little soft, so I don't want to mess that, that up. But when we have this on the place, we can figure out where should we put all this gear around it. Uh, this uh, electric motor has uh, four wires. Uh, it's a three-phase BLDC motor that runs with these cables. And this fourth one is the control cable with which the motor controller knows where the motor is spinning. So we must connect all these to the motor controller. So the motor controller should be quite close here. The wires are long enough that I can put it on the any side I want. I think I won't put anything on that side because we have the galley sink drain here and the water intake here. So it's possible that there's some water dripping around here. So I don't want to put any electric things under those. The batteries are going back there. And I think that I put the uh, 230 volts socket somewhere up here or maybe there and the charger over there as well so the input side is over there and uh, then on this side I will put the rest of the stuff and I think I'll put the motor controller on this side it is possible that uh, there is some dripping water coming from back there from the cockpit hatch or some other places so that water can come here and drain into this area or around here so I won't be putting any anything on the bottom there it it should stay just clean and uh, maybe at some point I will put an automatic bilge pump over there but yeah now I will get to the cleaning and uh, then we'll see all the stuff that goes around here. So my priority right now is to get the boat ready to go back to water. And uh, of course I need the motor for that, but we also need to take a look at something else at the front of the boat. So if we go through the toilet, front cabin, and down here, we can see that we have a hole in the boat. So I need to put the new speed transducer here. Uh, this is the depth, but uh, it doesn't go through. It's just on the top of the fiberglass. And behind there is the true hull for the toilet water intake. So that's I think it's brass and I don't know the condition of that, so I'm going to replace that as well. By the way, when you put the true holes into your boat, keep the distance from the bulkhead wall or something else. It's impossible to, to install anything that close to the wall. So it really pisses me off. Okay. These are the two things I need to take care of before we can go back to the water. The problem is that this is too small for the new speed sensor, so I need to make this uh, slightly bigger. I think we'll do that now. 
So this is the NASA Marine electromagnetic speed lock system. And uh, it doesn't have any moving parts, but as you can see, this is quite a bit wider. This is 50 millimeters, I think, and the old one was slightly less. So I'll take this out and we go to measure and cut the hole. This is familiar tool from the Sonoff project. So this is the hole from the outside. And if we take this, we can see that just a little bit too big. So we need to cut this slightly bigger. metal blade was too short and already broken so now it's gone have to destroy a couple of wood blades just a tip use the safety glasses and here in protection so tight I can't get it off anymore. I have to sand this area from the all bottom paint and uh, then clean it up and put the sticker flex and yeah. Okay as I'm inside here right now I'm just going to take that other true hole out. So the threads inside are so bad that I'm gonna cut it away. This is now the correct size, and the other one taken away. That one over there, I changed that last year. So after these two, all the true house are new. Bottom paint is nice. As we're on the lake. I don't really need any anti falling bottom paint, so I was planning to get rid of this paint, but I don't have time on this spring, so we'll put it next, next year. It can't be really healthy. There's no wind right now, so all the dust is just pouncing around here. Thirty-five. I think I have received the wrong through hull size. Yep, definitely not the same. Okay, so we're not going to install this just yet. It's a couple of days later, and uh, yesterday I was here off camera, just thinking and figuring out things. Most of the electrical stuff found their places down there and uh, I thought we could take a peek right now. So I took the motor mount away to reach back there. Now we can see the basic layout. Uh, the initial thought was that the charging side is over there and the 48 volt systems are over there and 12 volt systems here. Only difference is that the outlet is here because the old wire was too short to get it on that side. The old outlet was just behind this wall down here, so I didn't have to change the wires. I just put new outlet here. 
most of the stuff are now on their places uh, they are just temporary <laughs> and I went to the hardware store to get some screws to mount these permanently and also yesterday I reattached the water pump over here it used to be on this side where is now the motor controller the only thing that doesn't have any mounting ports is this charger I have to develop some kind of solution to mount it on this side there but first before I do anything over here I want to put those battery platforms on place there so today I will start with that these battery platforms are just plywood to which I glued these little notches here that hold the battery boxes on their places these screws are the mounting points that will attach on those legs back there I'm gonna use just basic stainless screws to screw them I'm not going to bother to do any epoxy fillings on those screw holes because I hope there's not going to be water back there so I have to crawl back there and these are quite fun things to poke yourself into let's try to avoid that sure if you can see anything but you can imagine this size of guy crawling here a couple of weeks we love boats don't we It won't go anywhere. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, looking good, don't you think? Next, these two. Okay, we're done here. So these are the platforms for the four lead acid batteries. Let's try to put the battery boxes so we can see how they fit in here. <laughs> like a glad. This bilge pump pipe is a little tough to turn. When the battery is here, it won't move anywhere. Okay, here we have the battery boxes. Now you can see the idea of the arrangement. So the main negative will be here, and the charger will be on this end as well as the battery monitor system. And the main positive will be on this end, and the wires will just go around over there. This is the main fuse and uh, the main switch will be on here behind this wall. So I will wire it over there to the main fuse and then it will go in two places. First through this contactor to the motor controller and for the 12 volt supplier. And then the 12 volt system will go through this and over here in this switch panel. So actually it's not going to be very much wires in this area except for the 12 volt outlets which will 
go from here. Yeah, that's about it. That's a very complicated system actually. This contactor will be used through at least two different switches. The first one is the key and uh, the second one will be a switch on the cockpit from where you can just put the motor on and off quickly. There is also option to put this key actually into the motor controller itself because this one has its electric lock so we have to supply 48 volts through this pink wire to the motor controller to really turn it on so I can also connect this key switch into this one and uh, that might be a good option as well so after that there's only really one switch that controls this conductor okay after some fiddling around all the stuff around here I found their places so if we start here I put some through bolts over here to give this quite heavy thing in its place but right there this is now screwed on and uh, for this motor controller I bought some little longer screws and put some extra washers between there because this bottom part acts as a heat sink as well so I didn't want to keep it against the wooden wall here and most effort went into this as I mentioned this charger didn't have any mounting options there so I had to invent something these are just stainless bracelets and uh, I put some rod here with a couple of nuts on either side and now it's well secured there it won't move anywhere and there was just proper space for the shunt I think this is looking quite good right now one thing is missing though and it's this battery protect I didn't put this intentionally in there yet there's place for this down here but uh, I have to test this system first and uh, figure out if I can use this because in earlier video I mentioned that this thing can't handle the current against what it's meant for so if my motor actually works as a hydro generator I can't use this between there I could put this uh, before this 12 volt power supply but the 12 volt system is so light and so simple that I don't know if it has any good but yeah I still have this as an option to put there if the hydro generator function is not really an issue thanks for watching this video there was a whole bunch of stuff going on and it will continue on the next video uh, where we're going to put the wiring and uh, I show you how I made those and uh, maybe we can take a little test run of that motor as well feel free to go to order these amazing t-shirts the links down below and uh, support this project uh, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't and there may be some news for the big boat project as well soon to come and if you're interested in more real-time updates you can go check my instagram account as well as the facebook account i will put images and uh, reports there as well and we'll see you in the next video bye <laughs>